We spend billions building bunkers and stocking beans, but most survival plans have a fatal flaw. They ignore the invisible physics of radiation. You think the blast kills you? No, it's the invisible bullets that come after. Picture the quintessential prepper. They're confident, maybe even a little smug, standing in their reinforced concrete basement. Shelves are lined with canned goods, water barrels are full, and they have a gear loadout that would make a special forces operator blush. From the outside, they appear invincible, but through those thick concrete walls, an invisible enemy is already passing, completely unimpeded. This is the reality of nuclear fallout, and to survive it, you have to understand it. First, let's be clear about what fallout actually is. It's not some spooky glowing gas that drifts on the wind like in old movies. Fallout is physical. It's the dirt, the dust, the asphalt, the very material of a city that gets sucked thousands of feet into the air by the mushroom cloud. Up there, in that inferno, every single particle is intensely irradiated. Then, gravity takes over, and this toxic dust begins to rain back down, blanketing everything for miles with a silent, deadly coating. To understand the threat this dust poses, you have to know about the three types of radiation it emits. Let's start with the first, alpha particles. Think of an alpha particle as a bowling ball. It's incredibly heavy and massive on a subatomic scale, and it carries a strong positive charge. When it's fired out from a decaying atom, it smashes into whatever it hits with tremendous force. But like a bowling ball, it runs out of steam very quickly. It can't penetrate. A single sheet of paper will stop it cold. The outer layer of your skin, the epidermis, is more than enough to block it completely. So, if the fallout dust is just sitting on your skin, the alpha radiation isn't the primary concern. The danger comes when you get that dust inside your body. If you inhale it or swallow it on contaminated food or water, that bowling ball is now careening around inside your delicate internal tissues. It's a short-range wrecking ball, causing immense cellular damage in a very localized area. Safe on the outside, lethal on the inside. Next up is the second type, beta particles. If alpha particles are bowling balls, then think of beta particles as high-speed ping-pong balls. They are much lighter. They're essentially just fast-moving electrons, and they travel significantly faster. This speed gives them more penetrating power. A beta particle will zip right through that sheet of paper that stopped the alpha particle. However, it still doesn't have the energy to get through much. A layer of your clothing, a thin sheet of aluminum foil, or a pane of glass will stop it. If fallout dust lands on your exposed skin, the beta particles it emits can penetrate the top layer, causing what are known as beta burns. These are nasty, painful injuries, very similar to a severe sunburn. The good news is that this is a manageable threat. If you can get to shelter and thoroughly wash the fallout dust off your skin and hair, you can stop the exposure and prevent further burning. It's a serious hazard, but one that can be dealt with through basic decontamination. This brings us to the real killer, the threat that renders most bunkers ineffective, gamma radiation. Forget analogies to physical objects. Gamma isn't a particle at all. It's a pure wave of high-frequency energy. The best way to think of it is as an invisible bullet. It has no mass and no charge, and it travels at the speed of light. That sheet of paper? It passes right through. The aluminum foil? It doesn't even slow it down. Your clothes, your skin, the walls of your house. It penetrates them all with ease. This is the deep, penetrating radiation that causes sickness and death by damaging your internal organs, your bone marrow, and your DNA from afar. It's the reason you can't just hide in a regular basement. To stop these invisible bullets, you need immense mass and density. You need feet of packed earth, thick concrete, or inches of solid lead. This is the physics that most preppers fail to account for. They prepare for the blast, they prepare for the dust, but they don't prepare for the ghost in the machine that passes through their defenses. While alpha particles are heavy and slow, Gamma rays are the true ghosts of the nuclear apocalypse, capable of passing through your walls as if they weren't even there. Those ghostly gamma rays don't just pass through you. They act like microscopic shotguns, tearing apart your DNA helix and preventing your cells from ever replicating again. This bombardment creates a storm of highly reactive free radicals, shredding the delicate ladder of your genetic code. This is the source of acute radiation syndrome, or ARS, the fastest dividing cells in your body. In your gut lining, your bone marrow, are the first to fail. Without the ability to regenerate, your most critical systems simply shut down. But while the biological damage is terrifyingly swift, the radiation source itself decays. This is where physics becomes your ally, governed by the rule of seven. For every seven-fold increase in time after a nuclear event, the radiation intensity drops by a factor of 10. 
If the dose rate is a lethal 1,000 units an hour at hour one, it plummets to 100 after seven hours. Wait 49 hours, just over two days, and it's down to a more manageable 10. Time is your greatest shield, provided you can wait it out somewhere truly safe. And that's where we find the most common prepper failure, the myth of the inherently safe basement. We imagine those concrete walls and surrounding earth as an impenetrable tomb, and that's partially true. The several feet of dirt are excellent at blocking radiation from the sides. The fatal flaw, however, is what's directly above you. Fallout isn't just on the ground. It's a fine, gritty dust that blankets every horizontal surface. Your roof, your porch, your lawn, each of those microscopic particles is now a tiny gamma ray emitter. And that radiation doesn't just travel sideways, it shines down. It punches straight through your shingles, attic, and most importantly, the simple wooden floor joists and subflooring that form the ceiling of your basement. From a radiation perspective, that ceiling might as well be paper. You are not hiding beside the threat, you are hiding directly underneath it. The second critical error turns your shelter into a trap, and it involves the very air you need to survive. A sealed bunker needs ventilation, but the design is everything. Most DIY plans show a simple intake pipe, maybe with a basic dust filter, pulling in fresh air. But where is that pipe located? Usually, it's just a foot or two off the ground, right in the layer where the heaviest fallout particles have settled. Your ventilation fan then diligently sucks this contaminated air into your living space. If that system is not equipped with a true HEPA filter, one designed to capture submicron particles. Then you are actively pumping the source of the radiation directly into your shelter. The filter itself becomes a concentrated, intensely radioactive hotspot. Your supposed sanctuary is now a radiation trap. You've invited the danger inside. The radioactive dust is the heat source, the thing emitting the deadly rays. And now it's accumulating just feet from where you sleep. So how do we counter these failures using physics? We build a core shelter. This isn't a new room. It's a fortified position within your existing basement. You create a fort within the fort. Drag a heavy, sturdy table to the center of the room, as far as possible from the outer walls and the ceiling above. Then you pile on mass. Shielding is about density. Use stacks of books, containers filled with water, bags of sand or soil, even pieces of heavy furniture. Huddle underneath this structure. You're leveraging two fundamental principles. First, you're adding dense material between you and the source. Second, and more powerfully, you're using the inverse square law. In simple terms, distance is your best friend. Every time you double your distance from a radiation source, you cut your exposure down to a quarter. By moving to the center of the room and building this core, you maximize your distance from the fallout above and around you, drastically reducing your dose. In the end, survival isn't about how much gear you buy, but how well you understand the invisible laws of physics that govern the fallout. So put down the catalog, pick up a physics book, and maybe, just maybe, you won't melt.